Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to B and K Bees for another episode of our beekeeping crash course. Today we have a really fun topic, our goal, you know, the main thing that most of us look forward to as beekeepers, other than maybe having hives alive in the spring, uh, which is honey production and extraction. So let's get right into it. So firstly, let me say, uh, pulling honey is not immoral. I know uh, a lot of like extreme naturalists claim that pulling it is, and replacing it with sugar is immoral and firstly, uh, a healthy colony that goes through a normal year, at least here in Michigan, is going to put up way more than enough honey than they need. Secondly, honey is not always necessarily the best food to get a colony through winter. Honey isn't always necessarily the cleanest source of energy we can have. Um, and what I mean by that is there's a lot of solids that cause digestive issues or have to, or cause the bees uh, to have to leave the hive to take a poop. And uh, when you substitute at least some white granulated sugar, that greatly reduces the amount of times that those bees are going to end up having to leave the hive to go poop. And if you add that to the fact that these winter bees are loaded with fat bodies inside of them that have a compound called vitelligenin, this vitelligenin allows for these bees to dispense and consume nutrients uh, throughout the dead of winter when nothing fresh is available. So once again, taking some of their honey and feeding some syrup to your bees is not in any way immoral and it's not in any way going to disadvantage your bees or make your bees have a less chance of surviving. That's just not the way it works. So uh, please just feel okay taking your honey, enjoy it. Uh, you love your bees, you take care of them, you, you make sure you're they are healthy. Um, and those are the things that you have to worry about and be responsible for as a beekeeper, uh, not making sure that every single drop of food that they eat is only honey and honey alone. So, before pulling honey, uh, it's best to sort of understand some basic things about it, like what it is and the natural ways it ages. Um, so honey is a process or a product that the bees make from nectar from flowers in their nearby area. So they'll go out and they'll collect this nectar and pull it into their honey stomach. Their honey stomach adds these uh, enzymes, invertase and Invertase and glucose oxidase, I believe. So the, the honey stomach contains these enzymes that start to break down the more complex sugar molecules, the sucrose, into simpler sugar molecules, glucose and fructose. <clears throat> so they fly back adding these enzymes to that nectar and then they give the nectar to a house bee when they reach the uh, entrance of the hive. This house bee takes that nectar, puts it into her honey stomach, adding more enzymes. And now that bee is going to go inside the hive and find a proper spot to place that where the rest of the house bees are going to fan their wings and dehydrate that nectar as it's being converted into its simpler sugars. So this whole process will end up in a, a solution that is around 17% water. Now that's not a specific number. Uh, different honeys uh, have different amounts of water and, uh, but generally the higher the water content in your honey, the greater of a chance there is that that honey is going to ferment in the bottle or the bucket. So we really, really wanna make sure that all of the honey we pull is capped or very close to being capped to make certain that the honey or that the water content isn't too high. So in addition to that real low water content and those simpler uh, sugar molecules, one interesting thing that happens to honey is that it crystallizes over time. <clears throat> different honeys crystallize at different rates um, and it's not a problem. You can restore it to its liquid state by heating it up a little bit and you know putting the jar in a simmering pot of water or just placing it in the microwave for a few seconds or you can just eat it crystallized. So that's not something to be concerned of, but what is concerning, especially if you've got honey in large buckets, is that during the process of crystallization, it can leave a portion of that bucket with a lot more water than the rest of the bucket. And what that can threaten is that it would ferment that small, higher water content portion, uh, essentially ruining your entire bucket of syrup or of uh, honey. So be mindful of all that. Um, you know, we don't do anything to, to uh, 
make certain that our crystallizing honey isn't going to ferment. It's just something to keep in mind. It's something to be mindful of. If you ever open up a bucket of honey that you extracted last year and, it, and it's fermented, that's a possible reason as to why. <clears throat> okay, so there are a bunch of different methods to pull honey. Uh, commercial beekeepers use a fume board, which is essentially like a particle board that they spray a nasty smelling chemical on. Those bees hate it and they move down away from that fume board and out of the honey boxes. I don't own a fume board and I don't own any of the chemicals, so I won't talk really a lot about that method here today. Um, but the method that I recommend for you for pulling honey if you are an absolute beginner is what's called an escape board. Uh, these escape boards, I own a few of them, I just couldn't find any today. <laughs> Um, these escape boards are boards that you place between your brood area and the honey boxes you want to extract. Uh, they have an interesting little uh, one-way entrance that the bees can get down and out of the honey box, but they can't get back up and into the honey box. So because of the fact that bees migrate naturally throughout the hive over the course of a day or so, uh, that means that those bees will exit that honey box and not have the ability to get back in. And you can come back two days later and see a honey box that's largely free of bees. Now, if you've watched this channel for a while, you'll realize that neither of those methods are what we use. Uh, what I use is about the simplest method you could ever possibly use. And that is to just take a frame, a heavy honey frame, and smack it on the ground. Smack it on the ground in front of the hive. Those bees will fall off and fly right back into the hive. And uh, you can take this heavy honey frame and put it wherever you're putting it. What I do with it is I put it in a box that's above a cover and below a cover. So not on a, uh, not on an entrance or not on a bottom board where they can get in, but on a telescoping cover that completely blocks the bees ability to get into the honey box. So I'll go through and pull all of my honey frames in that method. But like I said, if you are an absolute beginner and you don't mind buying an extra piece of equipment, I highly recommend the escape board method. Okay, so here is a picture, a beautiful picture of a heavy, heavy honey frame. I, that was probably, you know, three or four years ago or something. Uh, but that frame's probably got to be 12 or so pounds of honey by itself. So if you've got a box of honey where the majority of it is capped, but some frames are not capped, or say you have a frame where the majority of it is capped, but some cells are not capped, there is a very easy method that I use fairly often that I recommend to you. I don't want you to use it on all of the frames you're extracting, but maybe 10 or 20% of the frames that you're extracting, you can utilize this method. And what this method is, is it, it, it's called the if you can't shake it, take it method. And so what I mean by that is, if this frame was full of honey, but not capped honey, what I would do is find a colony or find a, a cover that was dry and shake it above the cover. Uh, this will allow for me to look at the cover and see if any liquid fell out of it. If liquid did fall out of it, then it's not viscous enough and I leave it for the bees to continue to dehydrate. If nothing fell out of the frame, then I consider it good and I extract it anyway. Now once again, don't use, don't do this for all of the frames you're going to extract in your round of extraction, um, but for a couple of frames uh, or maybe 10 or 20% of them, uh, this method works really well and I've never had it bite me in the butt. Um, knock on wood on that though because it definitely can if you end up taking something that's well too watery or well too liquidy uh, Then it can definitely threaten your entire batch uh, with fermentation <clears throat> Okay, so to extract honey firstly get it away from your bees um, don't try to extract outside, you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, bees love the smell of honey and they will find a way to get in. So get all of your frames uh, away from your bees and then you can consider using any of three different methods. There's the crush and strain method, the gravity method, and the mechanical extraction method, the industry standard. For crush and strain, uh, this is how we extracted it the first time and 
uh, how a lot of people extract their honey for the first time. The only real problem with it is that you destroy the comb. Uh, but what you do is you just take a big spatula and you put your frame up over a bucket or a big bowl and scrape all of that comb off and then crush it with your fingers so that it can get out of the wax. And then you can leave that wax ball to uh, strain through a cheesecloth overnight and you'll have uh, all of, or at least the large majority of the honey from that frame uh, nicely strained for you. Now the gravity method is another method where you don't use an extractor, but for this you do have to use a knife. Um, and so for the gravity method, let's imagine this is a capped frame of honey. You'd grab a large bread knife or a honey knife and cut those cappings off. Um, once those cappings are cut off, you can just let it sit on something suspended up above a bucket or a large bowl and gravity over the course of hours will drain the honey from the frame. Of course, a higher temperature will shorten the length of time that takes, um, but regardless, that method is available to you. The method that we use and the method that almost everybody uh, that makes honey uses is uh, using an extractor and for that, um, here's a, a picture of me cutting off cappings for a frame and getting this frame ready for the extractor. Um, and so for the extractor method, it's just like the gravity method. As you see here, you cut the cappings off and then you place it into a centrifugal extractor. And for ours, unfortunately, it's still a hand crank. And so we crank the heck out of it and it shoots the honey out of the frame up to the side of the extractor where then it can drain to the bottom and be collected into a bucket. Um, I highly recommend if you plan on keeping bees and, and this is something you're going to stick with, I highly recommend you buy an extractor. You can get a three frame extractor for three or four hundred bucks. It will pay for itself in a year um, and I, I, I just think that's the best method uh, of going, going about it. There, Man Lake has a kit that comes with um, a bucket with a honey gate and it comes with a strainer and an extractor and a knife and an uncapping scratcher. Uh, it's top notch. I will hopefully uh, remember to leave a link to that kit in the description. But if you're interested in it and I forget to leave that link, ask me in the comment section below and I will be, or I'll be sure to point you in the right direction. Okay, so that is it for a honey production and extraction. Um, I hope you're digging it. I hope you put up a lot of honey this year. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. It'll definitely be the best honey you've ever tasted if it's your first batch. So um, probably if it's not your first batch. Every single year I say this year's honey was the best honey I've ever tasted. So I think, you know, this is likely to be true again for 2020 for me. Um, but so yeah, like I said, I hope you're digging it. Uh, next episode tomorrow we're going to be talking about common problems in beekeeping and relatively easy solutions to those problems. Um, it should be a lot of really, really good information. So tune in for that. But thanks for watching. Get out there and have some fun with your bees. See ya.